Starting from the age of nine, today's guest has intensely studied the power of the mind. She has had a unique behind the scenes perspective of what works in truly shifting our inner vibration to transform our outer reality. She's a coach, she's a best selling author, and the founder of LOA Skills Camp. She's also the co host of Manifest It Now podcast. Welcome to the show, Jenny. How are you doing? Hi, Toby. Thanks so much for having me. I'm doing amazing. So I would just love us to, you know, start off with what you started at the age of nine. Like, why did you, what motivated you or inspired you to start, you know, <laughs> you know, um, studying the, the, the power of the mind from the age of nine? What's, what's, you know, pushed you towards that direction? Yeah, well, I don't know if it was so much my own inspiration and more that as much as it was my parents saying, here, go do this course. <laughs> <laughs> ah, <okay. laughs> so I, I have them to thank and it really mm. started teaching me the basis just was the power of our mind that our mm. thoughts have power in terms of what our reality is and what manifests in our life so if in you know when I was nine it was about school and sports so mm. you want to do well in school you know started with positive affirmations, you know, oh, I I am smart. I am smart. I can do this, things like that. And the same in sports. I played soccer and basketball and those are my main ones. And saying things like, oh, you're, you're strong, you're fast, like acknowledging, Mm. just using the power of our thoughts within like the narrative in our head to help create that reality for us. Yeah. So simple, but that's like the basis of all of this. Yeah. And while studying at the age of nine, and when, when, when while studying the, the power of the mind, what did you learn from that? I just really learned that we are not victims to our life. So that life doesn't just happen mm-hmm. to us. It's not random. That what's mm-hmm. happening inside us. And when I was young, it was just our thoughts. And now it's a lot more comprehensive in terms of emotions and vibrations. And that's how we're actually creating our reality. But then just knowing what I think about matters is what is the biggest, most important thing, because then you start asking questions about life. So when something happens to you, you can start to make that connection. Like, well, what was I, what do I think about this? What were my thoughts about this? What do I believe about myself in this area? So that say, bringing it to a really simple example, I'm I'm assuming most of our listeners are adults. So (laughs) say we're at work, (laughs) right? And and something doesn't go well. Maybe we, we make a mistake or get you know, in trouble from the boss for something. And we're starting to feel like a failure or like we're feeling really bad about that. And then we can ask ourselves, well, what have I been telling myself is true? Like, what are my thoughts about this? Do I like my job? Do I not like my boss? Do I think I'm good at this? That's the best place to start. Like, what do you think is true about this situation or about yourself? Because what is going on inside will always be reflected in what happens outside. Mm, that's so beautiful. What is going on inside will always reflect on the outside. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Yeah. And our thought, it starts in our thoughts. Yes. Mm-hmm. So once we can get, you know, get old or get in control of our thoughts, then we're able to control our lives also in some ways. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. This is about like taking charge of your life. You know, we have the power within us. Like as humans, we're, we can focus. That's like, that's the main difference is we have the capacity to focus than other conscious, you know, animals or or things, plants, there's all consciousness floating through. There's all life energy, but humans, Mm -hmm. we can focus and choose thought. Whereas, you know, so that's what separates us. So our ability to Mm -hmm. choose and focus thoughts on what we want is what gives us our power to create a, the reality or an experience that we want. And yes. we just mostly, we don't realize we can do that. We just think automatically yes. we're thinking on by default, but mm-hmm. we have so much more power than that. We can choose how to focus. Can 
Can you teach us how to do that? How can we choose what we focus on? Yeah. How? I mean, yes. there's it's that's that's a big process, <laughs> but it's really <laughs> it can start really yeah. simply. So tell me something, Toby, that you want to experience in your life. It could be big or small. Hmm. I want to experience pure joy. Pure joy. Perfect. So yeah. when you ask your, you can start to ask yourself, what are your thoughts about pure joy? Like, do I believe it's possible? Do I believe it exists? Because, mm. and I have a feeling that you probably, your thoughts are already around a lot of pure joy. <laughs> yes, <laughs> if yes, you're, yes. If you're here having soul, soulful conversations. Um, yes. But if you, if, you ask yourself what it is you're wanting to experience and then you can start to notice well do the thoughts in my head match that experience do they create the space for that experience to be a reality so if you're wanting to create joyful such joyful experiences and you noticed most of the thoughts in your head are about everything that's going wrong or most of the thoughts in your head are saying oh that's not going right in our world. Then there's all that fear over there. And, oh, look, did you hear about this disaster happening? Or, or my life isn't working out or my life isn't very good. Those are thoughts that are not in alignment with joyful experiences, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas the, the thoughts that are probably in your head is life is going really well for me. I feel really good about myself. I like following my passion. I'm good at this. There's love around me. There's lots of good things happening in the world. Look at that person smiling. Look at the blue sky. Those are thoughts that are a match to a joyful, to experiencing joy. Yes, yeah. yes. Oh, I love that. Yeah. No, earlier you were talking about, you know, vibration. Yeah. And that, that brought me to, you know, think about, you know, previous episodes that we've had. We've talked about, you know, vibration, frequency. So can you teach me a little bit about we as human beings and vibration? What's the relationship between, you know, human beings, we as people and um, vibration and frequency and waves and yeah <laughs> amplitudes and whatever. <laughs> I love talking about this because it's so foundational to understanding how the law of attraction works. Because if we don't know this, we can't understand the law of attraction. So we the the relationship between vibration and humans is that humans are vibration. <laughs> ah. So we <laughs> okay. every single thing in this universe is vibration, vibrational energy, which is measured in frequency. Okay. So we're, and when I was very young and first starting to understand this, and I'm, I'm a very visual person. I just see like, you know, when you break down in science and biology and you get to the atoms and the molecules and everything is vibrating, even those smallest components when you when you look at a table like a solid table and you break it down it's all these little tiny things moving around and they're all moving and each one of those things has a frequency and everything in this world is made up of that same thing even if it's solid if it's liquid if it's space it's all vibrational energy hmm. and so that's the relationship so humans walk around as this ball of the ball of vibrating energy is how I like describe it. Right. And, and each human has this, a specific frequency or a dominant frequency of energy. So when we go back to that example of if we're mostly thinking thoughts that are fearful or negative about the world or life, the frequency of us, our human container walking around is going to be a lower frequency. And mm. so, and then it, oppositely, if we're mostly walking around with really positive and joyful thoughts going through our head, then we're going to walk around in a higher frequency energy, right? Now I'm giving you a very general concept first. Obviously we can get a lot deeper into how that works, but humans walk around radiating a frequency of energy to the world around them. Mm -hmm. And 
the law of attraction, exactly like the law of gravity, always in effect, always at play in our universe, is constantly lining up similar energies. And so when you're in a really, if you're in a low frequency, you're going to line up with conditions and people. So things Mm -hmm. of similar frequency. So that's why like when you're having a really bad morning, you run into other people that are having a really bad morning (laughs) and then you just get mad at each other. And that's why the mm-hmm. same, like when you're feeling really high vibing and you're at the grocery store, you have this amazing conversation with the cashier because the yes. law of attraction is always lining up vibrations of similar frequency. Hmm. Yes. So how can we now, you know, elevate our vibration? How can we shift our inner vibration to transform our outer reality? Yeah. The first, very, very, very first step is become is awareness. It's becoming aware of what you are currently vibrating. Like, what is the signal that you're sending out? Because until you know that, you, you, it, we need a starting point, right? Like, we can't change something unless we know where we are, which is really easy. We can ask ourselves two questions. Um, what am I thinking and what am I feeling? Mm-hmm. So... It's our emotions that are the indicator of what vibrational frequency we're at. So we know by how we feel um, if we're in a high frequency or a low frequency. Okay, Mm -hmm. so our negative emotions are just showing us there's, I want to talk about that in a second, but our negative emotions are showing us, oh, we're in a lower frequency on the scale. And our positive emotions, our feel-good emotions are just giving us information. Oh, okay, we're at a, we're at a higher frequency on the scale. Mm. I really want to clarify, negative emotions are not bad. So one of the biggest ways that I think when, when people are starting to learn about this and leverage law of attraction, they say, I have to feel good, I have to feel good. And that's like the number one mistake that most manifestors make when they're like, okay, I'm trying to raise my vibration means I must feel good all the time. I have to feel good. And then, so when that's just not life, especially not in the beginning (laughs) of becoming (laughs) conscious and becoming empowered and creating your life on purpose, we are going to experience negative emotion. And the most important thing that lets our path continue to unfold like quickly and and getting those things that we want is our capacity to not judge our negative emotion Mm. okay so anytime we're feeling anything angry sad um guilty if 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 the only thing we can do in that place is say that's okay like i'm allowed to feel this Mm -hmm. that will move you more quickly towards a higher vibration than anything else. Uh, So I just want to, in in answering your question of how do we raise our vibration and how do we get to that higher frequency? One of the, so starting with awareness and understanding where you are and when you catch yourself in a lower frequency vibration, so feeling a negative emotion, it's so, so important to say, oh, that's okay. That is okay. There's no judgment. I'm not getting it wrong. I'm not doing it wrong because that thought literally moves you up the scale. That's a step. Yeah. I I, I love that. We have to be aware of what we think about and what we feel at all time. Yeah. And that we will to scale ourselves and say, okay, now I'm, I'm, I'm going through something bad. I'm having bad um, thoughts or bad emotions. Then I'll ask myself, oh, it's okay. It's fine. Yes. Then with time, I get back to the eye, you know, eye scale or eye frequency back. Yes, yeah. exactly. So it oh. is true. Like I understand where the idea comes from in terms of like, I should always feel good because that's mm. where we manifest the things that we want to manifest. <laughs> like that's where, and we want, we all want to feel good, right? We, uh, we, we want to feel good. We don't want to be feeling low all the time. Um, no. But it's trying the other, the other part of this. So the other way that manifestors get in their way, the other mistake they make is that 
they try to feel good too soon. Okay. So Mm -hmm. they, they judge negative emotions as bad. That will just get in your way. It's like a big wall. The other thing is, as soon as you feel negative, you think I got to feel positive. I I have to feel positive. I got to feel good. How do I get to joy? And then we try to get to joy instead of just getting out of the way and getting out of the way is releasing resistance. And so that's really in my course, LOA skills camp. That's like my foundational where I start with people. Anytime I'm working with clients, we go through this five-step process. And the first is awareness. And the second is releasing resistance because how I view it is we are, we have a natural vibration of well-being and abundance and love. Like that's our natural state and joy, Toby, like that's natural in us, in all of us, except we have learned thoughts and conditioned beliefs about what's true. And that like just acts as a barrier to that to us knowing and feeling the the natural well-being that we are. And so the releasing the resistance is all about letting those thoughts and emotions go, sorry, letting those thoughts go and feeling the release in emotions. So it's kind of like it just opens up. And then once we get out of the way with our mind, then our natural well-being can come through. And then we feel it's, we, we naturally feel joy and love and the freedom. And freedom, yes. And the, the, the duration of, you know, letting go of those emotions, is it, you know, defined or is it undefined? No, I have a very specific process, but the tricky part is that someone can't do this for you. You know, like I can tell you, I can guide you exactly what to do. And, but unless you're actually experiencing it, like you actually care enough about how you feel to, to go inside and to notice it, the shifts won't happen because it has to come from you. Like I can't feel for someone else. I can't think for someone else. Mm. And so that's why this is so such important work because I'm going to jump here to like a bigger picture for a second. When we, when we have empowered, I believe empowered individuals create an empowered world. And so when we're really wanting to create change in our world, we don't do that by only changing our action or trying to control someone else or some rule or some group. We cannot change others. Think about how hard it is to change ourselves, right? Like (laughs) our inner vibration, our thoughts and our emotions are the only thing we have control over, that we have the choice and the power to change. Mm -hmm. So when we prioritize that, now we're a part of the solution for the greater picture. to the Daily Climb podcast, where we explore personal growth, mindset, and productivity strategies to help you pursue your passions. My name is Arielle, and I'm so passionate about helping young adults actually feel excited to wake up in the morning and to create the life of their dreams. So I want you to make sure that you tune in every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for tips and inspiration so that you can climb. I can't wait to see how you grow. a more harmonious world, you know, Mm. less people Mm. suffering, more people thriving, that thriving experience on that larger scale starts with individuals thriving. Mm. And in order for that, for an individual to thrive, they have to choose what they're focusing on and thinking about and therefore how they're feeling And when we start to take control of that, we have this power to feel how we want to feel. So to be in that thriving vibration, those higher frequency vibrations more often in our life. And then not only are you creating a reality 
for yourself, that's what you want. And that feels good. But now you're, you are a vibrational part of the solution to create greater harmony or more consciousness in the world. Right. And so it just, it really starts. It seems like sometimes a really small thing to say, I'm going to pay attention to what I'm thinking about. And I'm going to start to take responsibility for how I feel. And, but it's the, I just think it's the most important thing we can do in the whole world. It starts with us, you know, being aware and um, aware of our thoughts and feelings, like you said already, and also, you know, focusing on, on all of these emotions yeah. and all of these thoughts, basically. And that way we're able to empower our world also, basically from the way we vibrate good energy. Good yeah. Energy. You know, because yes. the, Harmony exists in the higher frequencies and solutions. When we talk about, I mean, it's normal for our world or humanity to have problems, but there's always a solution. Every time a problem manifests, there's a solution right there with it. The thing is, and this is true in our personal lives and in, on a, in communities or families or anything, the problem exists at a different frequency than the solution, right? Mm -hmm. So if you are looking at the problem and you're diagnosing the problem and you're trying to figure out the problem, you are tuned into and focused on a different frequency than where the solution exists, right? Mm -hmm. The solution is going to exist in a higher higher vibration because it's the solution. It's what feels good. Problem and solutions are on different waves, basically, yeah. or different levels. And we have to be on a level, on a high level where the solution to is and not go down to where problem is. Yeah. And not, you know, get pulled down to the right. low frequency where level, um, where problems, you know, um, dwell. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, one of the ways that we humans get pulled into this a lot is worrying about our life. We're worrying about our future. We're, we're worrying and we're trying to figure out what's going to happen, yeah. right? Yeah. And so anytime we're feeling a sense of lack, let's say, let's talk about work and money. So um, how am I going to pay the bills or where's the money going to come from? Or um, I got to make sure I have enough for the future, right? And yeah. we're like, I got to figure it out. So we, what happens is in this present moment, which is our, our only power to communicate a vibration to the world is right now. We don't create in the future. We don't create in the past. We only create right now. So your power to change anything is in how you're feeling right now. now. How you're Mm -hmm. feeling right now is dependent on what you're focusing on right now. So if in this moment you're focusing on the lack of money or the future that how is it going to happen right now you're focused on the problem and we're like okay great I'm going to dive in I'm going to get my fingers in I'm going to figure out this problem whereas when you create when you start to like live with this knowledge of vibration you realize oh that's not the best way. You know, there is a better way. And that's what I like to really say too. Like this path is not for everyone. If, if you're listening to us and you're feeling really excited about what we're talking about, then yeah, this is, this is, might be a part of, um, you know, a really empowered way for you. But if you're someone that's like, no, 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 I know how to do it. And this, I I know how to do it. Then that's the best way for you because there's a lot of success that has been experienced through controlling action. And so it's not a wrong way. It's just a different way. And, and so I really, one of the most powerful things is really, really honoring whatever we're called to as individuals. You know, that's why that's like one of my favorite reasons why I love coaching and teaching law of attraction is because it doesn't tell you that, this is right, or this is wrong. It asks you to go inside yourself and pay attention. Is this right for me? Or is this, I don't even say wrong, but is this wrong for me or right for me? You know, so 
I'll jump a bit to using like health and exercise and food, you know, if we're looking for the best path for our health and, and we think that, um, meat is bad for us. And we think that veggies are good for us. And right. When we come back to that very, at the very beginning, when we said, what are our thoughts? What do I think is true for me? That's what you have to know, because it's not that meat is good and veggies are bad or veggies are good and meat is bad. You know, we have examples in our world that you can thrive off only eating meat or you can thrive off only eating vegetables. So what makes something right? What Mm -hmm. makes something right, Toby? No, nothing. I mean, it's really, it depends on the person. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. What you believe is right for you makes it right mm. for you. Your yes. thoughts about it. And what I call that is your alignment with it. So your alignment, mm. and I talk about vibrational alignment, your vibrational mm. alignment with something makes it right for you makes it easy, makes it beneficial, is good for you. Whether that's Mm. food or business or people or locations, it's you, you get to decide what is right for you. And I think coming back like this, this choice that we have to, to choose our reality and to choose the thoughts that we're focusing on. And that is really determining what kind of experience and what kind of reality we're going to create. Yes. So it's important for us to align our vibration also to what we want from life, to our purpose, basically. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Our purpose. Like how I, when I talk about purpose in life, I like to talk about kind of two levels to that. So we have our inner purpose, which is just to be here. Like we are fulfilling our primary purpose just by being human. Now, I know that's really hard for a lot of people to grasp. (laughs) (laughs) But like, that's like, we're here to be, you know, we're not taking any of our accomplishments with us. So we're going to live what, however many decades, and then we're going to die. And it doesn't, yeah, we don't take any of that with us. So our purpose can't be only to get things done and accomplish things and succeed because that doesn't stay with us. It's gone. That's not eternal, right? It's temporary. That's true. So mm-hmm. when I talk, that's why I talk about our, our primary purpose is just to be here and to be present mm-hmm. in life and to live fully and to just experience. And then often what most people talk to it, uh, refer to as purpose is what I would say is our secondary purpose. So it's mm-hmm. like how we express our energy in the world, our, our primary purpose in the world. Right. Mm, and so that's yes. all totally individual. And I think it's a hundred percent unique. Like I believe we're, we all have something unique within us in our soul that wants to express and manifest in this world. And I think yeah. that when you are living in alignment with yourself, which means honoring who you are, defining all your truths, like what you believe is true, what you want to be true for you, making choices that honor, hey, I like blueberries and it's okay that I don't like strawberries or I like warm weather and it's okay that I don't like cold weather, whatever. When you're Mm. honoring what you're called to, then you're living in your truth. And then, then you're guided as to how to express and fulfill your secondary purpose. Purpose, yes. Would you yes. say, Toby, that like this, it feels to me like this podcast for you is like expressing you, like it's part of that secondary purpose for you? Y- yes, of course. Yes, yeah. it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's true. And it's like that's you true. get to be you. Of course. And that, yes. that's what it really is. It's like whatever vessel or thing, whether it's a podcast or a program or a project or a business or a parent or like whatever the physical expression is, isn't as important as your feeling of like being you in this world. 
Mm, that's true. Yeah. So pursuing that thing that gives you joy, fulfillment, you know, is your secondary purpose, basically. Yeah. 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 And I just want to say this, though. So I think sometimes a lot of people look for the thing, like whether it's an activity or a person or an experience, they're looking for that thing to give them the feeling. Whereas actually when you're living this way, it's actually the opposite. So when we, when we look for the thing or we go after the thing, I'll just use the podcast as an example because we're talking about it. But if you were feeling really depressed and you're like, I should create a podcast because I want to feel joyful and that will make me feel joyful. Mm. You might like it for a month and then it would be like, okay, no, no. I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> True, yeah. Right? Be. Because, yes. because there's a vibrational component to everything. So you we think we want the thing, so the podcast, mm. to give us the feeling. But mm. it has to be a vibrational match. So unless you already feel joy inside you, you yes. won't be able to stay aligned with the podcast like it won't feel good to you so if podcasts exist in joy you know nothing yes. outside of us can give us the internal feeling can give us mm -hmm. the vibrational place we're after we have to deliberately create the internal vibrational environment and then the things come and they come to match our frequency and that's why the podcast feels so good for you because you were in the vibration already. It was steady in you. And then it's like, mm. oh, now here's a way, here's something that matches who I already am, where I already am vibrationally. Yeah. Wow, that's yeah. so beautiful. Thank, thank you so much for that explanation. Now I understand very much more about, you know, um, vibration and about the different levels of frequency. Yeah. That, that's so amazing. So I think with, with this understanding now, I'm able to maybe learn more about law of attraction too. And you are the best person to teach me more about that because you are, you know, a law of attraction coach. You are the founder of LOA, that is Law of Attraction Skills Camp. And you also have your podcast, Manifest It Now podcast, which is available on, on all platforms. And you also, you've also written a book called um, The Champion Mindset, or, yeah. Yeah, which is also available on Amazon and other platforms possible. So uh, you are the most qualified person <laughs> <laughs> in this conversation to talk about law of attraction with me. So can you educate me more on this? Like, can you t t teach me more about law of attraction, manifesting, and visualization? You, you said you, 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 know, you visualize also earlier yes so yeah. can you teach me more about this what does it have to do with you know vibration also no now we know how to vibrate <laughs> or know how to you know we know what the meaning of vibration and how can we relate this to you know law of attraction and manifesting and visualization yeah no that's a great question um and so yeah i actually co-host a podcast called manifest it now like you said and we talk about so if you are liking this information we have over 300 episodes of all on different manifesting topics. So <laughs> if mm. you ever want to check that out, but yeah. law of attraction. So you know how we talked about, we are vibration. Yes. The law of attraction is like always applied to all of the frequencies in our world. So it's lining up similar frequencies all the time. Mm. So it's like managing all these different vibrations. It's like, oh, we're going to bring these vibrations together. We're going to bring these vibrations together. We're going to, you know, match up this, match up this, match up this. That's it. That's all the law of attraction is doing. It, the law of attraction is not, it doesn't like, this is a funny thing to say, but it doesn't want what's best for you. It's why. Yeah. It's, it's non-biased. So if you're putting out a negative vibration, it's going to just match that. If, mm. if you're putting out a positive vibration, it will match that. Mm. And so it's not like, oh, this person has been really good their whole life. And so we're going to give them more positive things. That's not the law of attraction. And that's why we as humans have the the power here because we're the ones that get to 
activate whatever vibration we want inside us. We mm. have to take responsibility for yes. the vibration we are putting out in the world. Mm. And then the law of attraction is always there. It will, it just matches and lines up. So one of the, I mean, I, a lot of people reference the law of gravity when they're talking about the law of attraction and the idea that you don't wake up and you're like, Oh, today I'm going to use the law of gravity. I'm going to stand on the earth. <laughs> like it's just there. It's happens all the time. And the law of attraction is exactly the same way. So whether you are aware of it or not, it is operating in your life. And so why not start to leverage it and like become aware of how you can leverage it to your benefit in term in in order to create more of what you want. So how can we leverage it? How can we, you know, I know you talked about this in your book, The Champion Mindset, but can you like walk us through how we could, you know, leverage these principles of the law of attraction? Yeah. Well, the first step going back is, is becoming aware. So in order to kind of determine or decide what, kind, what um, energy you want to put out to the world, you have to know what's going on, right? So come back to yeah. thoughts and actions. So the way most people kind of get into this is, is wanting to manifest a certain experience. So is there anything else, Toby, you want to work through? Or give me a random example of something someone might want to uh, manifest or experience in their life. Um, maybe abundance, for example. Okay, yes. Yeah. So abundance. So the first thing you can say, so I kind of share these three steps when we're leveraging the law of attraction. This keeps it really simple. So what is it we want? So we want abundance. So let's say we want more money. How does that, the second step is how does that feel? Because we always want the thing because of the, the feeling we think it will get us. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you were to have more money in your life, how would that make you feel? Mm -hmm. What's the emotion? Happy. I guess happy, right? Happy, yeah. <laughs> often yeah. it's happiness. Often it's it's freedom. Like you feel free mm. when you have yes. when you have a lot of money, or you're feeling that sense of abundance. And so, the reason we're doing this is because for humans, like I said, we know what vibration we are putting out to the world by how mm. we feel. Now And we know that if I am putting out the vibration of abundance, then the law of attraction has to, it's not, this is not hope, it's the law. It has to line me up with things, people, experiences that match the vibration at the frequency of abundance. Yeah. And then, so now we know, okay, abundance feels like freedom to me. So we can't just go like feel abundance. That's why it helps to understand what the vibration, what the feeling is, what the emotion is. So now we know step number three. Okay. How can I activate that frequency of vibration in me right now? How can I do that? How can I feel free? And then, so you can start really simply by just noticing when you do feel free. So maybe there's, so you can notice when you do feel free and just like milk it and acknowledge it. So maybe when you have Saturday morning off and you're having coffee or you're going for a walk on the beach, you're like, oh, Saturday mornings, I really feel free. And then so you every Saturday morning, you're like, oh, I love this feeling. And you get up and you're like, I feel free. I'm free. I'm, I'm activating this feeling of free inside me. That's mm -hmm. one of the easiest ways. And then another part of this step three, like is, well, what other things give me that feeling of freedom? So you can use activities or conversations or people to, yeah. to activate the feeling of freedom. And then the more active it's in you, then the law of attraction will respond. It would very quickly. It does not take long, you know? Mm -hmm. And so and then <laughs> I want to just keep going. You get, yes, please. Yeah. 
then you can start to say, okay, which, so this is one of my favorite parts of teaching law of attraction and coaching is that we can become unconditional, meaning we don't need the money in the bank. We don't to feel freedom. We have the power to feel freedom within us now. And when we can do that, when we can choose and focus to feel free inside us now, we will attract the abundance that's a match. And so we can start to use our thoughts, irrelevant of what's going on around you. We can start to say, well, what, what thought feels free to me right now? What, what thought creates a feeling of freedom inside me right now? And then if you give that thought attention, the more attention you give that thought, the stronger that energy of freedom ha- ha- is active inside of you and then has more power in manifesting things like that. So that's that's the process. I mean, there's a lot of different hows, but you you generally decide what you want, you decide how it feels, and then you decide, and then you say, activate that feeling within me. That's the simplest yeah. way. And can, can we like consciously create a deeper relationship or can we consciously create deeper relationships with the law of attraction? Yes, definitely. Um, as mm. you, and I think this kind of is a natural progression, like as you start to, well, let me ask you this first. What does that mean? What do you, what does it mean to have a deeper relationship with the law of attraction? A kind of a relationship in which you could, you know, um, like you said earlier, like control your actions, control your your, your feelings, your thoughts, basically. Mm-hmm. Like deeper um, relationship with law of attraction, understanding it to a deeper depth, and also being able to use it for what you want to get out of life. Yeah. So the depth really comes into this. It's not really with the law of attraction. It's more like you create a more aligned connection to yourself or a more trusting you you build trust in yourself to focus or feel a certain way and that's what really changes how quickly and fast things come is when you start to show yourself in small ways oh hey this really works you know it's not the law of attraction is doing the hard work well your work does take a lot of focus too, but yeah. your work is to focus into the vibration. It's not to make the thing happen. It's not to make the thing appear for you. Mm-hmm. It is mm-hmm. to get yourself, manage your own emotions, which is harder than most people think on That's a consistent true. basis to yeah. stay in that vibrational alignment, that vibrational, like, um, allowing place that feel good place so that you can attract the thing. So when you say, can you create a deeper relationship? A hundred percent. Yes. And it's about creating the vibrational alignment consistently and steadily yeah. and consistently. And that's what that creates that depth because then you just start to expect like, then it goes from a, is it going to happen to, I know it's going to happen. It goes from a, this is, wouldn't this be nice if this happened to, this is just the way it works. Yes. Right. Oh, and yeah. so what yeah. part of the process here, tying it back to what we were talking about at the beginning of how, what we believe to be true will be true. When we start to practice, oh, things, things always work out for me. Things are always working out for me at the beginning. Mm-hmm. That's like, you kind of, you're like, well, well, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. But after you've practiced this, it becomes a knowing. Now it's an expectation. Things always work out for me. Things are always working out for me. And it, as you know it, you're not questioning it. It's a belief inside you. And now the law of attraction is always responding to that. And you're creating a reality. You're seeing a reality where things are always working out for you. Goodness. Wow, that's beautiful. Yeah. Wow. So for someone who is out there who is so excited like I am right now, but is new to it, what, what are the like the the mis- common mistakes that one could, you know, could make? How, how can we avoid them? Uh, what are the do's that uh, the do's and don'ts basically that we have to pay attention to? 
Yeah. Um, well, I talked about a couple and I'll just highlight them again is mm. judging negative emotions as bad. Okay. So we want to really avoid that one. And you can just say to yourself, it's okay to feel how I feel really, really important. You'll naturally be guided to a better feeling place. Um, the other one is trying to feel good too soon. Um, like I said, trying to jump up on the scale um, and, and say like, I feel, okay, I'm not feeling good. I should, or I'm not feeling, yeah, I'm not feeling good. I should feel good. I should feel good. Um, mm. And trying to go all the way up. So instead, mm. same thing is you just say, I know this is temporary. I, I'll feel better soon. Um, it's okay for me to feel this. I promise you, if you stay in that allowing place, your vibration will naturally rise until then you'll notice, oh, I feel better. And that's when you can start saying, you can start adding momentum. And that's when you can start really helping your vibration get higher and higher because you already feel a little good. You're not pushing against the resistance. Mm -hmm. um, another big thing people get kind of caught up in, in mistakes is that they are trying to figure out the how to what they want. Okay, so mm -hmm. say they want more money, um, like abundance, like we talked about. And the first next thought is, okay, well, how, how am I going to get that? How is it going to come to me? How could it come to me? And that's not our job. Our job is to feel the feeling of freedom. It's not to figure out the steps in between. That's what the universe is going to bring you. And so that's another way we get in our way. Um, and then another big one, big mistake people make is trying to get too specific about what they want too soon. So oh. sometimes, and there's a lot of information out there that says you have to be very clear about what you want in order for it to come and for, in order for you to make it happen. And mm -hmm. I, I vastly disagree. <laughs> I say you have to be very clear on the feeling of the experience. That mm -hmm. is what you need to be clear about. And you need to stay clear about that. But as soon as you try to say, I want $1 million and I want it this year and it should come in this way. And there, all of those details. So all of those mm. specifics bring in resistance because guess mm. what? You don't believe that yet. If you believed it, it would be happening. So there's this gap in everything that we want that is in, in terms of our belief. So we want something, we don't believe we can have it. That's great. Our journey is about closing that gap and gradually showing ourselves it's possible little bit by little bit and not trying to <laughs> just jump there, but that, yeah. yeah. And so anytime we bring in coming back to the clarity part, anytime we get too specific about what we want and how we want it we kink up our vibe we get in our own way so the most powerful thing is to stay with the feeling of the experience and to get really clear about what that is have you heard about newsly it's an all-in-one audio super app for ios and android that picks up web article about the most trending topics on the web at any given moment it reads this article to you in a natural human voice you can follow any topic as specific as you like it from sport to entertainment to science to bitcoin it will find the latest articles and read them to you and they also have podcasts. Our podcast, Mirror Talk, is there as well. You can also explore trending podcasts from over 50 countries. Download and use Newsly for free now from www.newsly.me. Use our promo code m one r r o r t a l k to receive a one month free premium subscription link and promo code are available in the show notes of this episode how do you compare you no know, being specific 
So having um, this visual board, for example, like visualization, like I want this house to look this way. I want to meet with this person, uh, you know, in this kind of event or something like that. How would you, you know, compare them? What is the difference between being specific and having all this kind of visualization boards or methods? The most important thing that you pay attention to when you're doing those vision boards and or when you're asking for anything is how does mm. it feel? So if mm. if you are in a place in your life where you can you literally know the exact house you want in the exact location and it feels good to you, then you're in alignment. You're in enough alignment with that. Then, then specifics are good for you. But if you're putting a vacation up and you're like, oh, that will never happen. And you start to feel tension. You're like, oh, then that's not something good to have on your vision board. So your vision board should just light you up. Like you should look at it and without, with that's kind of the vision board is a, just a visual representation. It's going to give you a feeling. The most important mm-hmm. thing about your vision board is it gives you a feeling, and that's what I was talking about. That feeling is the clarity yeah. of what you're creating, the clarity of the experience you're wanting to create, because it's mm-hmm. we create through the feeling, right? Like that's why we yes. want all those things is because we mm-hmm. think we'll feel better with them. Yeah. yeah. Ah, okay. Yes. So it's the feeling that we create from the vision board that actually matters. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So wow. just follow That's your good. feeling when you're putting things on your vision board. Does that feel good? Yes. Does that feel good? Meh. So no. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I would love you to you know, tell me a little bit more about your book, The Champion Mindset, yeah. which is available on Amazon and on, also on your website, there's more information to that. I'm going to place the link in the show notes of this episode. So anyone who's interested could just click on the link and order the book from Amazon and awesome. also read more about Ginny on our website also. But can you tell us what inspired you to write this book? Can you tell us more about the champion mindset? How can I get the champion mindset? Yeah, well, the title really came to me. It was an insp- inspired idea that just popped in my head, but it's this idea that we have power in our life. Like we are the champions of our own life. We get to choose, we get to decide. Nothing outside of us needs to determine our fate or our destiny. It's all us. And it's not just about controlling. It's not just about what we do. It's about how we're thinking and how we're feeling and therefore who we're being. And so the champion mindset is really, it's about If I had, I I remember asking myself, if I had one thing to share with or leave the world, that's what it is. The champion mindset and LOA skills camp really guides that transformation. So, but it's a really good overview of what law of attraction is, how it works, how you can apply it. And then, so you get a really solid foundation. And I think the, the biggest feedback I've gotten from readers of the book is just, Oh, okay. I get it. Like you made it simple. You made these Mm. terms, even people who have been studying, you know, LOA for 20 years, read it and said, okay, yeah, this makes, this makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's good. So how can I apply the love um, attraction? How can I apply the love attraction to become a champion in parenting, in relationships, (laughs) in my career, in my health? in my feed, well, feeding myself, how can I, you know, use the law of attraction to become a champion in all areas of my life, basically? You can hire me, Toby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> I love it. But you really, yeah. really can. And when you start to do this work, it affects every area. I love that you brought up parenting because like, I'm so passionate about that because we are, our kids listen to our vibration. They understand our vibration more than they understand our words, you know? So um, being, having an understanding of what you are vibrationally communicating to people, to the world around you, what you're creating is so powerful for every area of your life. It's like, you just put you in your power. And then if you want something different, you can create something different. You can just guide your vibration, but you're really being that example for your kids right now in how you feel. And, and then for the community around you, because everything has a vibrational component. 
That's true. So for someone out there who wants to um, hire you or wants to make use of your service, what's the best way to do this? Oh, you can just visit my website. It's really easy. G-I-N-N-Y-G-A-N-E.com. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's going to be in the short of this episode. So for those who want to make use of your service, um, I, will, I will encourage them to just visit your website and yeah, maybe just attend the skills camp also, the LOA skills camp also. Yes. Thank you awesome. so much for having me on here, Toby. It's been so fun. And like our visions totally align in terms of this conversation. I just love coming to share energy and connect with people. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I can feel your energy from here virtually. It's like, wow, so awesome. Like, I'm, I'm fully charged right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but one, one, one last question yeah. before, before you go. Like, someone is asking, or someone could be asking that, um, how can I use this law of attraction to achieve, you know, my highest or my fullest potential? Is that possible? Mm. To get to the peak of the peak of my destiny or purpose, can I do that with the law of attraction? Definitely. It... The thing is, the law of attraction is going to match your, it's going to respond to how you're vibrating, right? Mm. So nothing, there's not enough action in the world you could take to give yourself the feeling of I'm, I've reached my potential. It's mm. something that you have to start to change your thoughts and self-narrative about inside your head first. So it's more about the connection between you and you and understanding. And what, what I would say is, you don't, so you don't necessarily use the law of attraction to reach your fullest potential. You train mm -hmm. your thoughts and emotions to activate the highest potent, the highest vibration for you or alignment for you possible inside and then the law of attraction will bring you things that match that that feel good to you so that might be different that will be different things at different levels but you knowing i am living my fullest potential right now is the vibrational place that you want to get to in order to leverage the law of attraction oh awesome that's beautiful so we have to work on our thoughts and our mind, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, wow. using your you so thoughts. Much, <laughs> yes, using your thoughts, yes, yes. Wow, thank you so much, Gina. I really appreciate this. This has been so awesome. It has been wonderful speaking with you, learning about vibration, learning about the law of attraction, visualization, vision board, and also how to utilize and use everything to become who we want to be basically in life. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Wow, you made it to the very end of this episode. Thank you so much for listening. I'm grateful for your time, your love, and your contributions. Subscribe, like, review, and share this podcast. God bless you. Bye.